The other nutrient defect that may play a primary role in ulcerative colitis is phosphatidylcholine. Phosphatidylcholine is the main ingredient in lecithin. It is a component of cell membranes. It is secreted into the intestinal mucus barrier where it downregulates TNF alpha signaling. In patients with ulcerative colitis, the concentration in ileal and colonic mucus is one-sixth of normal and one-sixth of what it is in patients with Crohn's disease. There is a German group that did this research and they developed a product which is a colonic release form of phosphatidylcholine. If you just take lecithin or phosphatidylcholine orally, you'll absorb it all in the small intestinal. It'll never get to the colon. So they worked very hard to develop a form that would release only in the colon. And in clinical trials, they've shown significant benefit for this in patients with mild to moderate ulcerative colitis. In fact, 500 milligrams four times a day of this product allowed 80% of patients who were steroid dependent with ulcerative colitis to withdraw from steroids without experiencing relapse. They published their work in journals in the U.S. They presented their work at Digestive Diseases Week in San Diego last spring. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this product, I, I think this product is commercially available in Europe. It will eventually be available in this country and I think it is, it is non-toxic and an exciting potential addition to the nutritional therapy of ulcerative colitis. There are a couple of dietary supplements that should be avoided. Glutamine and melatonin. Melatonin is advocated by some um, as potential therapy for inflammatory bowel disease. However, it's a very potent inducer of Th1 immune responses, which are already um, hyper aroused in Crohn's disease. And there are case reports of aggravation of both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease that have appeared in the literature. Uh, and glutamine is a favorite in the nutritional medicine community. I like it a lot. I use it for a variety of purposes. It's been shown to improve small bowel immunity and permeability. However, studies in Crohn's disease have shown that it is not effective in helping patients with Crohn's. I advise against the use of glutamine or melatonin for people with inflammatory bowel disease. Stage one in approaching inflammatory bowel disease, certainly avoid foods that provoke symptoms, high omega-6 oils and added sugar. Patients with Crohn's disease eliminate elimination and challenge using specific carbohydrate diet, low flex, or yeast elimination as a guide. Ulcerative colitis, high fiber plant-based diet supplemented with fish oil, probiotics and prebiotics. If that fails, approaches with Crohn's disease. Measure nutrient status and correct nutrient deficiencies, especially vitamin D, the B vitamins, and zinc. And if diarrhea is present, I add Saccharomyces boulardii. Main side effect of S. boulardii actually is constipation. So if people are constipated, I'm very careful about that. There are studies of aloe gel and ace manin, which is an extract of aloe in ulcerative colitis, which have shown some benefit. Curcumin has gotten a lot of attention lately. It's a component of turmeric. It has anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer effects. There was a controlled study of 1,000 milligrams of curcumin pills twice a day for six months. It reduced the six-month relapse rate by 75% in ulcerative colitis patients who were on 5-ASA derivatives. But the benefit was attenuated at 12 months and did not achieve statistical significance. So we don't know what the long-term benefits are. Nonetheless, I like curcumin for patients with ulcerative colitis because of its anti-cancer effects. And uh, this kind of dose of curcumin has been shown to interfere with some of the genetic changes that are found in colon cancer cells. Boswella, Indian frankincense, um, a biblical herb, has been shown to be as effective as mesalamine in patients with Crohn's disease and patients with ulcerative colitis. Whether as an add-on it's helpful hasn't been studied, but it's certainly in patients who don't tolerate mesalamine, Boswella may be worth trying. 
and mastic gum, Pasticcia lentiscus. This is a food, and it's found in the Mediterranean. Most of it comes from the island of Chios, but it's grown widely in the islands of the Mediterranean. There's a small, uncontrolled study of patients with Crohn's disease which showed benefit. There was significant improvement in inflammatory markers. It was not just a change in clinical status in these patients. In conclusion, nutritional therapies for inflammatory bowel disease must be individualized through what is essentially an N of one trial. That is, each person has to serve as his or her own control. Diet change will benefit most patients with Crohn's and will induce complete remission in some. Diets plus fish oil, probiotics, and prebiotics will benefit some patients with ulcerative colitis, mild to moderate, and vitamin D, homocysteine, and zinc levels should be monitored regularly in patients with inflammatory bowel disease. There is more information on the website of the Foundation for Integrative Medicine, it's mdheal.org, and at a website called pilladvice.com, which I created to deal with drug supplement interactions.